Hey, what's up everybody? Back with another how-to video. Today we're gonna to be working on this Kia Optima. So this is a 2012, falls in line with a 2010 to 2015. This is a 2.4 non-turbo GDI. So this is a gasoline direct injection. What we're gonna be doing today is the valve cover gasket. So let's go ahead and get into this now and we're gonna run through some steps on how to knock this out. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna do here is we gotta release the fuel pressure and bleed the fuel system. So all we really have to do is remove this fuel pump relay right here. So if we look at it, it's in the second row, right next to the ECU 30 amp. There's a 30 amp. So here is our green fuel pump relay. We're just gonna pull this guy on now. All right, that is out. So now what we're gonna do is start the car um, and we'll just let the car run essentially till it uh, stalls from having no fuel. So let's go ahead and start the car now, guys. There it is, guys. Not immediately. All right, guys, next step here is we are gonna disconnect the negative battery terminal. I do this for some jobs. We are gonna be taking off the ignition coils and uh, wiring harnesses for the fuel pump and things like that. So I think it's just best if we take off the negative terminal. So we'll go ahead and loosen this thing up. All right, this bad boy off. All right, so now we have killed the fuel pressure. We have taken off the negative battery terminal. The next thing we can do is get into taking off this engine cover. So this should just pop right up. We're just gonna pull on it straight up and it should come right off. All right guys, so now you can see we have access to our valve cover. There's quite a few things we're gonna be taking off in order to get this thing off and get it cleaned up. So if we're looking at it, you can see we got some leaking right down here. Looks like a little bit right here. Definitely got some right there as well. Um, let me grab a light, you can see a little bit better. Definitely got some oil coming off on this back corner. Almost looks like she's leaking all the way around. And you can see it's really coming out right here onto that exhaust manifold heat shield. So we definitely got some oil spewing from this thing. So this was definitely time to address this. So, All right, guys. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to start with our high pressure fuel pump. I am going to disconnect the lines, the harness, and the hard line. So... This orange clip should pop up. If you look on the sides here, it's got two green tabs. We should be able to press them in. That should come off. Just be careful because you will have a little bit of residual fuel pressure and a little bit of fuel coming on out of there. So just be prepared for that. Might want to have a rag or something of that nature around. Okay, so next thing we're going to do here is break off our hard line. So this is a 19 mil. So should be able to crack it loose pretty easily all right so we got that off you can finger tight it off after that and you can see there is some fuel coming out on this line as well just be careful have a rag ready try to get some of this off to get it off of the coil here i think we want gas in the coil but there we go guys got some of that fuel out of there so we're just going to leave that be for now once we lift this thing off of here we should be able to just easily maneuver that around our hard line okay so next thing we're just going to unclip this harness so you just press it down switch hands for you guys now we have our high pressure fuel pump completely disconnected um, the only thing we're going to have to do is after we remove some more of these uh, bolts we're going to take those two 10 mils out and we'll actually get the whole fuel pump assembly out in its entirety so Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start knocking out these ignition coils and getting them out. So these are 10 mils. All right, I'm gonna start them easily. Just crack them loose with a, a wrench. And then from there, I'm just gonna go ahead and back these off with a drill. All right. So each bolt that I'm taking out, I'm actually gonna put it in a magnetic tray. All right, we're gonna have a couple magnetic trays to help us keep these bolts organized. So I'm actually going to put our ignition coils in this one and just keep them in order because 
I'm weird in OCD like that, but we're just going to keep all of our bolts separated and have them easily organized so we can keep track of everything we got going on, okay? So let's go ahead and get the rest of these bolts out, guys. So I'm just going to lightly crack it, back it off, and we're just going to do that for each one. You can even back it off with just the drill. You don't have to crack it with a wrench. I just wanted to do that to make sure they weren't too tight and they weren't so don't want to break anything or strip anything out. So I got that one off with just a drill. So you can do either or you want to be precautionist. You can of course crack it loose with a wrench first just to get it going and back it off with the drill. All right, so now that we have all of our bolts out, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pull this red tab back, which allows us to remove the harness from the ignition coil okay so we pull this red and gray tab back it allows you to then press the harness pull it out and from here we can easily remove our ignition coils and if you see guys this is leaking into the coils as well we do have um, oil getting into the cylinders so the spark plug seals on this were also bad in addition to the valve cover gasket itself okay all right, so let's do this next one here. Oil. Just for reference too, guys, this car only has 77,000 miles on it, so. I'm gonna disconnect this harness right here. This is the harness right here going to the fuel pump. So we're gonna go ahead and disconnect this now so we can get this off of the valve cover, okay? So this is just a connection wire right here. Now that allows us to get access to this last one. All right, got her off. All four. Each one of these ignition coils has oil on them, all right? All right, guys, now we got our ignition coils out, right? Everything's out. We're gonna now approach this harness right here. So this whole harness assembly needs to come off, okay? This is just a wiring harness rail, plastic uh, cover basically mounted to the valve cover just for all the wiring harnesses for the fuel pump and for each ignition coil. So we're gonna go ahead and take these 10 mils out and we're gonna lift this wiring harness and the assembly of it out of the way so we have more access to the valve cover, okay? I'm just shooting these out with a drill, guys. All right, so we got those out. This lifts up and out. This is still connected right here with a 10 mil ground. Let's get that ground wire off right here. This is the last wire holding this plastic harness rail on. All right guys, so we got that ground wire out of there. Free that up. That's freed our entire harness up, okay? All right guys, so I have a strong reusable zip tie. I don't know if you can see that, but I've just zip tied it to the intake tube here. So that's completely out of the way. And what I'm gonna do is I have our bolts that we just took out, I'm gonna put them back in the valve cover so we know exactly where they came from. All right. If I can, there it is. So that's right here. Okay. And then our ground, which was up here that we disconnected so i'm just going to put that back as well just to keep all these bolts organized we know what goes where we're not going to get confused when we go to put this back together and we'll know where everything goes okay all right guys now that we got some of this stuff out of the way we're going to start removing some of these bolts here okay so i'm going to go ahead and take out these middle bolts wow this one was extremely loose this one wasn't even tightened in wow I barely touched this corner one and it just came right out. It was like finger tight. 
Wow. Okay, so that can't be good. I'm sure that's partial reason why this was leaking. There's some oil all over this thing too, of course. Let's try this next one here. All right, so that one's not finger tight. Let's see if we can crack her loose. Yeah, she came out pretty simply. Back this one off. as well so it looks like we just had that last one that was finger tight for whatever reason not good at all so I get this last center 10 mil out oil all right guys we got all center bolts out here okay so now we're going to start attacking all the tens that are going around the valve cover all right all right guys so we're just going to approach all these exterior 10 mils on the outer perimeter of this valve cover we're just going to crack them loose with the socket wrench okay this one right here you'll notice it has this metal bracket here blocking access from a socket wrench so we're going to crack it loose right now with this ratcheting wrench i'm going to approach that after the fact so we can move that and get a torque wrench in there when we go to reinstall but for now we're just going to back it off with the wrench i'm going to go around break each one of these loose and then i'm going to take my drill and just remove each one of these individually from there all right so we're going to continue breaking all these loose and then from there we can go ahead and remove the valve cover so we we're taking off all these bolts as you can see, this one is being blocked by this hard fuel line. Um, we're not gonna be able to get a wrench in there to get it out or torque it in correctly. So this is really in here. Um, this is mounted right here. Looks like to the uh, head. Um, there's a 10 mil, although trying to get to it is impossible with a wrench or a socket. So this is not moving. I can't get into here to get this out or this out so what we're going to do now is we're just going to have to take off our zip tie holding this in and take off this air uh intake hose to help us get access to get into there to get that 10 mil out so let's go ahead and get some of this stuff disassembled so we get some room to work down here okay all right guys So we've got a little bit more access to where we need to be. So let's see if we can get into this area now to remove this fuel line and get into that 10 mil bolt holding the valve cover in. All right, guys, so we finally got to that bolt, have access. I will say it was not fun. It took me a little bit to figure it out. So what I did is, of course, we removed the intake tube and the intake assembly. Um, you know, I loosened up the clamp down there so this can flex this can move We've got the hoses connected to it from here on the valve cover disconnected and right here so you can move it now where that ground harness was mounted this is a bracket that has two 10 mils holding it in it has a 10 mil nut on this stud and it has a 10 mil bolt next to it so what i did is i squeezed a little one fourth uh ratchet in there i got these 10 mils out I'm able to move this whole assembly now without having to disconnect every single hose. It allowed me just enough room to move everything here to get access to this clamp, which is holding the fuel line in. And now if you look, I can move the fuel line and we have full access to that 10 mil. So 
Not fun guys, but really you just disconnect the two 10 mils holding this bracket in. You have enough access to push this away, which will give you access to the 10 mil clamp holding the hard fuel line in, and then you can flex it and move it from there. So let's keep moving along, along these bolts, along the edge of the valve cover. We're gonna break them all loose and we'll keep moving from there. All right guys, so now that we have access to this and we can move this fuel line, squeeze the socket in here. Break her loose, break all the rest of these loose. I knocked you guys over. I'm just gonna go around with you guys. each one of our exterior outlining 10 mil bolts loose or going around the valve cover. I want to take each one off individually. I want to take it over right here to our valve cover uh, packaging that it came in and I'm going to put each one in order so I know where it came from. All right, so that's just me being extra in OCD, but I don't know the lengths of these bolts. Sometimes valve cover bolts are different lengths. I like to keep them exactly where they came out of so you know where everything goes back when you go to reassemble and there's no guessing. So let's get each one of these out individually. We're gonna go ahead and put it over onto the packaging and then we'll know where each one goes when we go to reassemble. So let's get these out now, guys. All right, guys, you can see we got all of our 10 mil valve cover bolts out. They're all right there on that packaging in order. You can see they're all out. All right, pretty much have this disassembled. Only thing we need to do now is get these two 10 mils going into the high pressure fuel pump. Okay, we need to get those out. And um, it looks like we got another one right here, another 10 mil we're gonna have to take out here and here. Um, but other than that, just these two 10 mils on this high pressure fuel pump you do have to back these out slowly about the same pace so we're going to do a little turn on this one little turn on this one little turn little turn you know basically going back and forth between the two to evenly get them out because this is spring loaded it does have pressure and you can break these bolts or damage something when you're trying to get this high pressure fuel pump out so we're going to go ahead and get these out slowly do them evenly and that way we can remove this get the tension off of it evenly and not damage this part. So let's go ahead and get that high pressure fuel pump out right now, guys. Guys, I gave it a little turn. Give this one a turn. And I'm just gonna be bouncing back and forth between both of them. Just trying to get even turns. Just barely turning these out. Eventually, we should see the tension on this high pressure fuel pump loosen up. Kind of looks like it's already doing it. Yep, and if you guys can see, it's barely moving. That spring loaded tension has let up. We should be good. out so I can probably individually take one of these out now. safe location this is very fragile you don't want to damage this this is something that obviously costs a lot of money so we want to make sure nothing happens to it so put this in a safe spot where it's not going to get moved touched accidentally hit any damage happened to it so let's go ahead and move this out of the way and if you want to know what I did I just have the cover to the side with the ignition coils in order and I also put the high pressure fuel pump in its spot right here on the cover as well just to safely protect them so all right guys, as you can see, we got that high pressure fuel pump out. Now that we have that out, we have access to the last two 10 mils that's holding this valve cover in. So we're gonna go ahead and break both of these loose. All right, so 
both of these are now loose and we're just going to put these alongside of the fuel pump bolts not to mix them up so they know that they're in the same area so what i've done as you know is had the package with all the valve cover bolts i got our center valve cover bolts here here is our fuel pump bolts and i'm going to put these right next to it so that way i'm keeping this all in order i know what goes where all right guys all the bolts are out we just have a couple more things we have to do before this is completely freed and ready to come out, so we do have to pop these off. We're gonna do that real quick, and we just have to get this hose clamp back and pull this breather hose off so that we have room and get everything off of this for it to be freed up and pull it on out. So let's go ahead and get those last couple things off so we can pull this valve cover off. All right, guys, so for this clip right here on this wiring harness, I'm just gonna pry this panel popper underneath it here. I should be able to pop this up. These actually disintegrated on me, guys. So these are pretty bad off from age. They're just dry rotted. As soon as I touched them, they broke. So it's going to happen sometimes. I mean, you can see, look at this uh, covering on this electrical tape. It's just all dry rotted from just being driven and eight years old with all the heat coming and going. So we do have it out of the way now, guys. So let's move this harness over here. And now we can go ahead and remove this last hose. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get this last hose off of here. Put that there. Should be able to loosen this thing up a bit. Looks like it's a PCB valve actually in there, so. Here we go, guys. Hose is off, harness is off, everything is off. Our valve cover is completely free now with nothing holding it in. So now we should be able to pry this up and this whole valve cover should come off. So let's get this thing off, guys. All right, guys. So what I'm going to do is I have this big flat head. I'm going to start prying on this front left corner. Let's see if we can get this thing to start popping up. I hear it. She's coming. Now guys, keep in mind, there is going to be some gasket stuck to the head. There's going to be some of it stuck to the valve cover. You're just going to have to kind of fight your way through it. All right, guys, so we do have to um, move this bracket. I did break it loose with a 12 mil. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, back this off and that should give us the room we need in order to lift this up and pull it out from under that fuel line and remove the valve cover. So let's go ahead and get this bracket off and then we can go ahead and see if we can get this valve cover off in its entirety. There it is guys. Look at that. Got her off. All right guys, there you can see, got our cams engine. Get a good look in there. So what we need to do now, we have a lot of cleaning to do. We got to clean all these exterior edges. We have to clean pretty much anything where the gasket's going to come in contact with uh, the motor. So we need to clean all this where the spark plug seals are. So we're going to get some paper towels, brake cleaner. We're going to start getting in some cleaning and get the valve cover itself and the motor clean so we can get this reapplied with the best possible outcome. Here is the valve cover. Let you guys check it out. See, she's pretty dirty. She's gonna need some love too. So let's go ahead and get into this now, guys. All right, guys, so I did some things without you. Hopefully you aren't mad, but uh, what we do is some cleaning, clean this all up. As you can see, she looks pretty good. I don't think you guys really needed to see every second and step of me cleaning this, but um, really what I did is I used a little bit of gasket scraper, um, some paper towels, some brake cleaner, and we went around all this, all in um, the spark plug region where the seals go all around the high pressure fuel pump mating spot and where the gasket's going to be so of course around the whole edge here so all this should be clean and there was a little bit of rtv and we are going to put some back right here where the timing uh chain is so we're going to make sure that we get some rtv back there but we had to scrape that off but overall you know it was just a little bit tedious but you know 
you want to get this as clean as possible. I think we got this to a pretty good spot. I cleaned up some of that oil that was uh, all in the back of this heat shield and um, you know all around the edges. We also cleaned up the valve cover, of course. So we went around the edges of the valve cover. It's all dry and clean. Try to get in these little valleys all where the spark plugs go. So we should be good, guys. We're going to go ahead and start putting this gasket into our cover. All right guys, so we're gonna go ahead and start with this gasket. Let's see if we can get this thing in here. Really all you're doing is pressing it along the valve cover region. In. All right. Okay guys, as you can see, we got the valve cover gasket in here. This is a Felpro valve cover gasket. I'm not so sure I would recommend it because this fitment was a little bit eh. So I'm gonna show you my first issue. Um, as you can see, you know, it's, it looks pretty good around the edges, but for some reason right here, it had a bend and it's just trying to almost, you know, come out here, like, you know, open this circle more like it wanted to come here. It really shouldn't be like that. It should be straight like this. So this right here took a little persuading to make sure that it was in there tight and nice. I think we're good. I don't think it's going to affect anything. It looks pretty tight now and nothing else is popping out along those edges. But I don't like that in the high pressure fuel pump gasket. This was crazy to really get in here and align. I don't know if you can see these little uh, ridges, but you gotta almost individually press each one of these ridges in and get it to a line. You gotta start at one corner and just work your way around and go all the way around. It's really not the best fitment. The OEM one that was in here looked a lot better, looked like a lot better sealing gasket. So I don't know if I'd recommend this Felpro gasket. You know, I have used Felpro with other things in the past. They're not the best, they're not the worst. They're usually pretty good though. and. Um, just seems as though this fitment with this one might be a little bit uh, off compared to some other uh, applications I've seen from them. So, just food for thought. Maybe you want to get the OEM gasket. All right, guys. So we're ready to put the valve cover gasket back on. Everything is cleaned up. Before we actually put the valve cover on, we do need to apply a little bit of gasket sealer right by the timing cover. So what I'm going to use is the right stuff. I've used this stuff in the past. It's pretty good. I've used a lot of different permatexes and different um, applications but from what I've seen um, this is really good stuff so I'd recommend using some right stuff so we're going to squeeze some up we're just going to put a little dab right here where the timing cover is all right some right there a little bit on this side all right guys, so now we're gonna go ahead and drop this valve cover in and get everything hand tight. All right guys, so we wanna be super careful dropping this in, of course. So I'm gonna try to slowly navigate it underneath of everything. Okay. I wanna try to drop it on evenly so when we hit the RTV around the timing cover, it's gonna drop perfect. There we go. She dropped right in. Okay, so now let's get all these bolts in here hand tight. If you remember, we kept them in order. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finger tight all of them in the specific order they're supposed to be in. And then we're gonna go through a sequence in order to get this torqued down correctly. So let's go ahead and get this on here now, guys. All right, guys, we're on that last bolt. We're gonna finger tight that in. And then we're gonna go ahead and go through a sequence in order to get this torqued down correctly, all right? All right, guys, so 
Here's a diagram of how this is supposed to be, the sequence for this valve cover. And this is the torque specs as well. So what we're going to do, if you look at the first step, it says go from 2.9 to 4.3 foot-pounds. We're going to go right in that range. I got it locked in at 4 foot-pounds, so I'm converting it to inch-pounds. We're going to do 48 inch-pounds. So let's go ahead and go through this first step sequence in order. And we're going to go ahead and start torquing these in. So our first bolt is this one right here. are done with our first torque sequence okay so now we're going to go through our second torque sequence and it's going to be between 5.8 and 7.2 foot pounds okay so we are going to convert that to inch pounds so I'm going to go right at 6.5 I think that's a good number um, it's kind of in between what they're suggesting so that would convert into 78 inch pounds so we're going to lock in our torque wrench at 78 inch pounds and then we're going to go through this next sequence all right guys so basically we're doing the same sequence it's just with a different torque now so as you know we did our first sequence now we're going at 6.5 foot pounds or 70 inch pounds um, i'm using an inch pound so that's why i converted it and we're going to go through the same sequence again and we're going to get all these torqued in at the final torque so let's do that now All right guys, so we went through our second sequence. This is completely torqued down now. Um, this is all good, so now we can move on to reassembling everything. All right guys, so the next thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna put this high pressure fuel pump back in. So we're gonna go ahead and grab it. We're gonna drop it in carefully. We're gonna put the bolts in. Um, we are gonna take it the same way we put it out. You do even small turns. We're gonna torque it to spec. So let's go ahead and get into it now and drop this fuel pump in. slightly do each side going back and forth until it's actually torqued in so we're just going to bounce back and forth until we hit our torque spec so let's do that now Both of them are tight. 
probably should lock into the torque spec any minute. in guys all right all right guys so we got this in so now we can go ahead and move on and start reassembling some of this stuff all right guys so we're going to get our reassembly started right here we're going to get this uh purge solenoid back into position um, we're going to move that back up there so we're going to put the fuel line on um, we are also going to go ahead and get this fuel line mounted back up with the nightmare bolt to get to and we'll get all this reassembled and then we'll work our way over. So let's get this stuff back together, guys. All right, guys, so we're gonna start putting this bracket and all this stuff back together here. So we get everything on. Start reassembling everything. All right. All right, guys, so we got the wiring harness all back in. We're gonna put this ground wire back and connect that back. And Tighten your own down. And we're just slowly putting everything back together how we took it apart. So it's really not too crazy. Once you know how it came apart, it's a lot easier to put it back together most of the time. So get this ground in here. Once we get this ground tightened down, we're gonna move on to the intake. Alright guys, we got that ground tight. So I'm just gonna look over everything real quick, just make sure everything looks good and it's intact and where it's supposed to be. Looking pretty good here. All right, so now we're gonna reorientate our intake, bring this back down. Okay. Get this back onto the intake box. Get our breather hose right back onto the valve cover. Okay. I'm also making sure it's tight down here. So now that the intake box is on, we're just gonna tighten everything down. So now we're gonna get this clamp onto the hose to Clamp itself back onto our valve cover here. All right, that's back on. Fell right back into place, which is what we want. This is all tight. Everything looks good. All right, guys, moving right along. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to putting our coils back and getting our um, fuel line reconnected. So let's do that now. All right, guys, so let's start finishing the assembly of this. If you remember, this did have oil on it. We're going to give it a nice wipe down, clean it up. I'm going to get everything off of it. All right. I do have the 10 mil, so we're going to drop her down. Okay. Plug her back up. Okay. Press it on to the valve cover. I'm going to drop this down finger tight. We are going to torque these, but right now we're just going to finger tight them. Okay, it's in. So let's put the rest of these coils in. So we're going to go to four foot pounds again, which is 48 inch pounds. So let's go ahead and torque all of these to 48 inch pounds. One. Shouldn't be tight at all, guys. Two. Three. This last one. Dang. They're all torqued in, guys. I'm just going to go over them one more time make sure. So these aren't tight. Okay. So 
now we need to do, I'm gonna plug this connector that goes to our high pressure fuel pump back up. Plug in the connector onto the high pressure fuel pump. Okay, it's on there. Okay. All right guys, so we got our coils all in, everything's torqued in. All right, we got a few more things we gotta do. So we gotta get this fuel line back on. It's clipped on, all right. So we're gonna go ahead and get this. <clears throat> we did forget to put this on, so let's get this hose back on here. All right, so that's snug. I'm gonna go ahead and move that clamp in a second. We gotta put our box back on right here, so grab our air box, slide that back on. And what I did was put the bolts back in here so I knew where they were. Take those out so I can let that drop back in. We do have to put our PCB valve hose back. So let's slide that back over the PCB valve. All right, we're gonna put that clamp back on. So I'm just gonna pull this wire. We're gonna cut these off and we're gonna just zip tie that back to make it look clean. So we're gonna fix that. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and get everything else reattached. We'll put the clamps back where they belong. I'm gonna get this bracket here too. We're gonna to put this bracket back on down here because we did take that off. So really just putting the bracket, the clamps and getting that reattached and we should be good guys. So let's go ahead and finalize this and we can move on to the final step. Guys, we got everything reattached. We fixed these with the broken clamps, so I just cut them off. I put some nice zip ties on there, so now it looks exactly like it was essentially. It just has a different style zip tie. Um, got our clamps back connected, everything back connected. All right, so it's got a couple of last moves here. We're gonna put our fuel pump relay back. Definitely gonna need that for the car to start. All right, there's that. And then we're gonna put our negative battery terminal back on. And then we can go ahead and give this thing a start, guys. So let's get into it and see if it worked. All right, guys, so just attached our negative, put our cover back on, moment of truth. All right, guys, let's hope for the best here. I'm just gonna turn the accessory on a couple times just to Get those fuel pumps primed and going. All right, let's start her up. There she goes. It's gonna take a second to turn over because it didn't have fuel pressure, of course, so. Just give it a second and it should actually, um, you know, start right up. So it looks like we're good, guys. We got everything uh, back together. She's running. Sounds all right. Everything looks good. Um, that's the mileage we were at. So all we got to do now is put that cover back on and we're good, guys. All right, guys. Got the cover popped back on. Everything's done. Everything's reattached. And we have officially replaced the valve cover gasket.